Grant, and I'm a church planner in Seattle, Washington. What you've started by clicking this video is something that we at our church call the Spotlight. It's a product that's been in development and is still in development and will continue to be in development until we officially launch at the end of the year. But uh, because of the circumstances of this week, because so many churches are canceling and because of people who are practicing social distancing, it seemed like a good time to, to make a Spotlight and put it out there so that people could use it on a weekend like this. There was a moment in my house this week when you could hear a pin drop. And that, that was a remarkable thing because this was a pretty busy week in my house. We had a group of four women from Wisconsin Lutheran College who came out here to help us do some mission work and, and get some things ready for the launch of the church. Um, you know, we had my parents here to help manage all of that. We have a two-year-old who is potty training. And, you know, beyond all of those things, it was a week where it seemed like every hour, everything was changing. You couldn't look at your phone and not find out something new and crazy and unexpected and uncontrollable. It was a crazy week. And so for there to be a moment when all of the sound and all the breath was sucked out of the room, that was noteworthy. Over the course of the week, there had been a lot of times when I and the students from Wisconsin Lutheran College and my wife and my parents, we would, we would joke about the coronavirus and COVID-19. We, we referred to it as the corona. Um, you know, after somebody would cough or sneeze, you'd always just kind of look around and shrug and be like, yeah, coronavirus. And, 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 you know, we were, we were a little bit flippant about it, so much so that sometimes we'd even think like, yeah, God's probably going to just strike us with it because we're being so disrespectful of it. And make no mistake, we weren't being that way because we don't take it seriously. In fact, it's quite the opposite. We were being that way because we do, because we're here in Seattle. And life is going on in the midst of the coronavirus response, but it's different. When you know that every person under 40 might be carrying a virus that could infect other people, life goes on, but it isn't quite the same. You wash your hands more. You own more Clorox wipes than you ever thought you would need. You you bump your shoes together instead of shaking hands. And you, know, you look around and 99% of the people of Asian descent who you see uh, on the street or at a store or something are wearing masks. And you feel for that whole community as they struggle and suffer against the reaction that some people are having in the midst of this coronavirus. It's real and it's everywhere. And so, we make jokes. We use some humor. It's a human thing to do. I was reading an article about a psychologist who was trying to answer the question, why do we make jokes in dark and difficult and complex times? And, and she said that it's sort of something we do to cope. She says, one of the reasons we laugh at tragedy is that it makes the enormity of the issue easier to deal with. But then in the article, she goes on to talk about how we've done this over and over and over, and we've almost become used to it. And now we live in a society, she says, where tragedy has become something that we've become conditioned to laugh at. It's kind of wild. Uh, Sigmund Freud talked about it too. He talked about it in terms of like our, our sense of self or our ego, uh, trying to insist in joking in the midst of dark moments that it cannot be affected by the traumas of the external world. The thing is, it can. We are affected by it. And the moment that my wife got the thermometer out and brought it into the living room, we all knew how we were feeling about COVID-19 and the coronavirus. Because she would take that thermometer and it was the kind that went in an ear and she put it in somebody's ear and we'd all breathe in and then it would beep and she'd look at it and say 98. And as soon as we heard that eight, we didn't hear anything else because all of our breath came out. We knew that person was all right. We knew they didn't have a temperature. And then she'd put it in the next person's ear and we'd all breathe in again over and over and over. You know, there are weeks, there are days, there are hours, there are even moments that you'd give anything, you'd do anything, you'd tell any joke just to feel like you could get a handle on that moment. Just 
to feel like you had some amount of control because frankly the uncontrolled and the uncontrollable seem like they're taking over and any sense of stability feels like it's slipping away. I get it. Welcome to the spotlight. This week we're going to talk about feeling fine in the midst of a global pandemic slash panic. May you find in this rest for your weary souls, wisdom for your frantic minds, and purpose for your yearning hearts. Thanks for clicking.